Okay, good morning yogis. So I can see a couple of you tuning in, so that's really exciting. Um, just wave to let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, so for those of you who I haven't met in person at one of the Rise Up retreats when I was a yoga teacher there, my name is Gio and I'm super excited to be bringing this practice to you today. So as I see more people tuning in, um, that's fine. If you're joining us late, just pick up with where we are. So for all of those of you who are already on your mats, I'd like you to take a comfortable seated position. And we're going to begin our practice with some breathing techniques. So just to start off, I want you to make sure that you're sitting up really nice and tall, comfortably on your sit bones. So have a little wriggle around if you need. Roll your shoulders back and down and just begin to soften your face. You can allow your eyes to close here or you may like to just gently gaze out in front of you. So to begin, we will do some Nadi Shurana breathing, which is alternate nostril breathing. So I want you to take your right hand and I want you to tuck in your pointer and middle finger. And then bring your hand in this mudra up to your nose. So you're going to breathe in through your left nostril first. So you're going to block the right nostril and then you're going to block the left and exhale through right. Inhaling through right and exhaling through left. So we'll begin together. So blocking off the right nostril and inhaling through your left. Big inhale, blocking off the left and exhaling through the right. Inhaling through right. And exhaling through left. Inhaling through left. And exhaling through right. Inhaling through right. And exhaling through left. So continuing with that breathing pattern for three more rounds. Inhaling through the left, exhaling through the right. So following that circular pattern of breathing and just allowing the breath to calm your mind. So any distractions that you may have outside of your mat, I want you to let that all go. Just focus on your breath. Coming in through one nostril, and out through the other. Taking those big inhales through the nostril and then the calming exhales through the other. Wherever you are up to with your alternate nostril breathing, I want you to just take one more full round. Nice, so once you've finished that round, just bringing your hands to heart center in prayer and then bringing your knuckles up in between the third eye, just sealing in that calmness, that feeling of ease and stillness with your breath, and locking in that concentration, that focus of just being you, your breath, and your mat for this next 60 minutes. So thank you all for joining me today. Now from here, we're going to bring ourselves into a wide knee child's pose. So your knees can be as wide as mat width apart. I want you to spread your arms out, really reaching out and then allowing your forehead to rest down on the mat. From here, we'll go into our Ujjayi breath. So for our Ujjayi breath, we want to be inhaling in through the nose and out through the nose. So we can seal our lips here and we can seal them for the rest of the practice. We don't need to breathe with anything other than inhales and exhales through the nose for the rest of our practice. 
So while you're here, you may like to play a little bit with softening down the shoulders. The forehead is down on the mat. I want you to feel your sit bones sinking heavily into your heels. Now from here, we're going to press our fingertips into the mat enough to raise our elbows, forearms and wrists off the mat. And then we're going to walk our hands over towards the right. So your hands should come all the way off the mat. You're creating a side stretch all along your left side. Inhaling and exhaling here, you can allow your forehead to rest back down on the mat. So staying there for three breaths. I'm just checking in with my screen, making sure you guys can hear me okay. I'm just seeing that everyone has joined. So wave out if you can't hear me well enough or turn the sound right up. The main thing here is that we're breathing and practicing together, finding unity even through this time of separation. So really just settling into that side stretch. Let's make this our final breath. So you may like to reach your hand a little further to the right for your final breath, taking a big inhale, feeling that extra little bit of stretch, and then with an exhale, allowing the body to soften. Gently walking yourself back to center, really allowing yourself to stretch forward, and noticing here if you feel like there's more length on your left side. We'll even it out by once again, pressing into the fingers to raise the elbows, the forearms and the wrists off the mat and walking the fingertips all the way over to the left, all the way off the mat and feeling that stretch, especially underneath your right armpit. You may notice here that your right hip has tried to move over to the left as well. I want you to try and anchor that hip down. So with your next inhale, find length and with your exhale find softness to release your right hip down towards the heel. Noticing the tension and if there's too much for you to be comfortable here I just want you to walk the hands slightly closer to the mat. So just finding the stretch, the amount that you can still breathe but enough to be able to feel it. From here, we'll take one last big inhale. Really feeling that stretch and then with our exhale, letting it go. Walking back to center, reaching the fingertips out, allowing the forehead to rest down. And then with an inhale, we're going to bring our hands underneath our shoulders, our knees underneath our hips. So we're going to go through five cat cows here. So with an inhale, we're going to look out and lengthen. And with an exhale, we're going to round and curl. For any of those who are just joining, you can step right in. Cat cow is a great place to start. Inhaling out and then exhaling to round. So depending on how you're feeling today, we'll go through three more cat cows. You may be just exploring your body and seeing how it feels, or you may really be reaching out, broadening the chest, looking up high, and then on your exhale, really activating the core. So remembering that you hold the intensity dial, making the practice exactly what your body needs today. On an inhale, looking out and lengthening, Exhaling to round, this is our last cat cow. So from here, we will just find a simple tabletop. Now from here, bringing the knees together and coming into simple child's pose. So knees are together, ankles are together, forehead rests down on the mat. And I want you to allow your shoulders to drape over your knees, really finding some softness here. So we've only moved a little bit, but we are getting into that place of yogic state. So with that, I mean, we are linking our breath with movement and we're using our ujjayi breath to keep ourselves within the practice. 
So now is a really good time where we're in this simple pose, our child's pose, which is what I like to call our home pose. Here's a really good place to set our intention for the rest of the practice. So an intention that you may have is to simply be present on your mat, which is a really good one for if you're practicing at home and finding it challenging to avoid the distractions around you. So that will be my personal mantra, you're welcome to share it. Or you may simply like to dedicate today's practice to someone you love or something that's been on your heart. Whatever your intention is, while we're here in the simple pose, I just want to remind you that you can always come back to this pose whenever you feel that the practice is getting too much or if the pose is not appropriate for you. So this is our child's pose and you can come here whenever you need. Now sealing in that intention and coming back up into our tabletop pose, we're going to warm up the shoulders and the synovial joints. So we're going to reach our left hand out. So reach out like you're trying to touch the screen in front of you or the person that's reaching out for you. Keeping the core activated with an inhale, we're going to bring the fingertips all the way up to the ceiling and with an exhale, sweeping it down and around. Inhaling, really reaching out, following your fingertips with your eye gaze, exhaling as the arm comes down. We have three more go rounds in this direction. Seeing how much you can open up your chest. And really just feeling where you have any resistance. Not judging it, just sending your breath there, allowing the movement to smooth out. This go around, we'll switch the directions. So we're just reaching the arm back, up, down, and around. We have three more rounds here, making sure that you're keeping your breath steady. Creating that ocean sound at the back of your throat with your ujjayi breath. This is our last go around. We're going to pause at the top, reaching the fingertips all the way up to the ceiling. And then with an exhale, we're threading our left hand underneath the right. We're letting the shoulder rest down. Checking you guys can still see me, you can. Perfect. And then this may be exactly where you stay. Or for those of you who practice regularly, you may be reaching your right hand to take hold of the left front of thigh, really binding, so really grabbing on here. Wherever you are, whatever option you're taking, I want you to make sure that you're still breathing and you're keeping your neck safe here. You shouldn't feel any pressure. For those of you who like to fly the right leg, feel free to bring that up. Whatever option you're taking, just remember that throughout this practice, we will always have options and levels. I was saying before, you hold the intensity dial. So just make sure you're staying true to yourself, finding what you need on your mat today. If you lifted your leg, bringing it down now, we're taking the right hand and pressing it into the mat. And then with an inhale, reaching the left hand all the way up to the sky. Bringing the left hand down, shaking the shoulders out, and we're going to go through some big circular movements with the hips. So I call this one Dancing Lion. And while it doesn't look like much, it feels really good. So just finding any natural free form movement that feels right for your body. And then switching the direction. So I'm taking my hips in big circular motions, but you may feel like you need a figure of eight or to come back and forward. Nice. Resetting in tabletop, and then we'll go through that on the other side. So reaching our right hand forward, inhaling, bringing the fingertips up, exhaling as we sweep down and around. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Three more go arounds in this direction. And here you are using your upper back strength to open the chest. So if you're finding that your chest isn't open, think about the opposition to that. 
one more go around in this direction. So nice to see people joining in. You can jump in wherever we are throughout the practice. Switching the direction. Really feeling that synovial fluid that protects your shoulder joint, releasing, lubricating the joint so that you can get a full range of motion. One more go around, this time we're leaving the fingertips pointing up towards the ceiling and then with an exhale we're sweeping the right hand under the left. Don't rush it, just because you know what your options are here, still take your time to set up in the pose. So you may be here with your left hand still resting in front of the shoulder on the mat or you may be grabbing hold of the front of the right thigh. Once again, I really want you to grab on and bind. That's why we call it a bind, we're fusing together. This may be where you stay, or for the more advanced practitioners, you may be raising up your left leg. If you have raised the leg, I want you to dorsiflex your foot. We're not pointing the foot here, we're pressing back with that flexion. Remembering it's okay to try new things. If you fall out of it, that's fine too, as long as you're honoring your body and your practice. Reaching the arm all the way up, gaze up towards the fingertips, and then bring the hands down and reset. So just shake out the shoulders a little bit, and then we'll go through our dancing lines once more. So three rotations in one direction, and then switching rotations. So this time you might choose to take a figure of eight, Instead of your circular hip motion, this is your practice, you hold the intensity dial and also you need to be feeling into your body. It doesn't matter so much how a pose looks, but how it feels within your body. Nice. And then from here, we're going to come all the way back to sitting on our heels with our arms outstretched, so into a modified child's pose. From here, we're going to come up through tabletop, keeping the knees down, bending at the elbow, so a modified chaturanga, chest all the way down to the earth, untucking the toes, and then inhaling to come up for a baby cobra. Nice, releasing down, Pressing the hands into the mat and coming all the way back into our modified child's pose. So we'll speed that up and we'll go through that a few more times, just feeling into the rhythm of that movement. Coming up for baby cobra, exhaling down, pressing into the hands to bring your sit bones all the way back to the heels. Just allowing it to feel good, don't take it too seriously, we're just moving through our bodies, inhaling up, baby cobra, bringing forehead down, pressing all the way back, and then on this version, you may like to add on a little bit here, so when you come down, you might like to press into the tops of the feet, raising the thighs off the mat, coming into full cobra. From here, lowering down, pressing your hips all the way back, and then bringing your weight into your hands, tucking your toes up, and coming into our first downward facing dog of practice. So from here, we're going to just feel into the hips, so work out what we're dealing with. So from here, I want you to raise, my plants are in the way, I want you to raise your left leg back and up. So pressing really firmly into the hands, flexing the foot, my hips are still square, and then from here I'm going to bend the left knee and I'm going to allow the left hip to step over the right. And then just circling out the knee three times in each direction. Feeling that help heat building. Switching the direction of those rotations. Finding out what you're dealing with. Nice. 
and squaring off the foot and placing it back down. We'll rinse it out with a simple sun salutation. You may like to lower the knees, bending at the elbows, inhaling as you bring the chest through the hands. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. We'll raise up the right leg now. Keeping the hip square initially, then bending at the knee, allowing the hip to open, and then allowing that free form motion. So three rotations with the knee in each direction, making sure that you're still pressing your hands into the mat evenly. Nice. Pausing there, straightening the leg, straightening the hip, and then bringing the foot back down. Once again, we'll rinse it out, so you may like to lower your knees, so you hold the options, or if you're ready, full chaturanga, inhaling through either baby cobra or full up dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. And then from here, we're going to step the feet all the way up between the hands. So I want you to keep your legs as straight as you can, keeping the hips lifted. I want you to just step the feet through, creating as much space as you can until you bring your feet all the way up to the top of the mat. From here, we're going to look out, flattening the back, and then with an exhale, we're going to fold. Taking hold of opposite elbows, allowing the weight to come into the balls of the feet. Keeping a gentle bend in the knees here if you need it. Just allowing the top half of your body, the crown of your head to be really, really heavy. Once again, tapping back into that Ujjayi breath. Feeling that sound of the ocean at the back of the throat and allowing it to guide you through your practice. From here, we'll release the elbows and one vertebra at a time, we're just going to round all the way up to standing. Bringing the hands to heart centre, we're going to go through three rounds of Sun Salutation A. So take your options, lower the knees down if you need. On an inhale, reaching the arms up, palms touch. On an exhale, forward folding. Inhaling to look up and lengthen. Stepping back to plank pose, lowering the knees if you need. Lowering down through chaturanga. Inhaling up for cobra or up dog. Exhaling back, tucking the toes under. Downward facing dog. Now we have five breaths here in our downward facing dog. So I want your eye gaze to be reaching for your navel. I want you to really press your hands into the mat. Lifting the sit bones up, two more breaths here. I want your breath to be audible. And then looking between the hands, Walking, stepping, or jumping the feet between the hands. Inhaling to look up and lengthen, flat back. Exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling to reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Palms touch, hands come to heart center. Two more rounds. Inhaling, reaching up, palms touch. Exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling, flat back. Hands plant, stepping or jumping back, plank pose, lowering down through chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog or cobra, exhaling back, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. Depending on how you're feeling today, you may be using this more as a recovery pose, or if you're feeling like getting really active, there's no such thing as easy yoga if you are really giving it your all. So you may be activating through the thighs, really pressing the hands down into the mat, hiding the heels behind the toes and reaching the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Two more breaths here. On an inhale, looking between the hands, this time you may hop or you may be stepping 
the feet between the hands, inhaling to look out and lengthen, exhaling to forward fold, let it go. On an inhale, reaching the arms up as we reverse swan dive, palms touch, hands come to heart center. One more round, inhaling, reaching the arms up, exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling, looking out, flat back. This time you may like to jump back, lowering down through Chaturanga, inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. So we don't want to be sinking into this, we want to be strong. We really want to be pressing the heels back, reaching the sit bones up, lengthening through the body. Two more breaths here. You may like to hop or float, or you may be stepping the hands up, taking the option that's right for you, inhaling to look out with a flat back, exhaling to forward fold, then inhaling, reverse swan dive, all the way up to standing, palms touch, hands come to heart center. Taking one grounding breath here, so a big inhale, vocal exhale, inhaling, reaching the arms up, palms touch, exhaling to forward fold, inhaling, looking out and lengthening, stepping or hopping back, Lowering down through Chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog. Coming back into our downward facing dog, and then from here we're going to pause and we're going to lower the knees down. So a little bit of core activation here, and then we're going to take it from the knees into our downward facing dog. You'll see what I mean as we go along. So for our core activation, I just want you to reach your right hand out and kick your left leg back. Nice and lifted, there's no sagging. And then from here, with an inhale, I'm going to bring the knee to the elbow. Really lifted and rounded, puffing up through the back. Reaching out. Exhaling, elbow to knee. Inhaling, reaching out, exhaling to round, elbow to knee. We'll go through this two more times. Exhaling, elbow to knee, inhaling, really reaching out, exhaling, elbow to knee, reaching out, and then we'll stay here, planting your right hand down. You can bring the right foot out like a kickstand. I want you to reach your left hand out, Flexing the left foot and just raising that heel up a little bit more. So knee down, half moon pose here. This may be enough for you, or you may choose to bring your left heel to your seat. Noticing you bring the knee in first, then reaching the hand back, taking hold of the foot, pressing the foot into the hand, allowing the neck to be soft. Without slingshotting, I want you to release the foot, reach the hand back up, and then we'll bring it all back down into a simple table top. Okay, so we'll go through the opposite side. So this time, reaching our left hand out and kicking back the right foot. Bringing elbow to knee, inhaling to reach out. Elbow to knee, really feeling the core firing, feeling the heat building. Three more rounds, elbow to knee. I don't want any sagginess, I want you to be thinking about bringing the knee up and into the core. Inhaling to reach out, elbow to knee, reaching out, that's the last one. Then bringing the left hand down, bringing that left foot out like a kickstand, flexing through the right foot and reaching the right hand up. Seeing if you can bring that right foot up just a little bit higher. You can feel that squeeze in the glute. Noticing everything is one straight line. And then from here, if you want to add on, you can bring your right heel to your seat and then reaching down for the foot. Once you get hold of it, pressing the foot into the hand, allowing the neck to be soft, opening through the chest. 
Beautiful work, yogis. My breath rate is up and I'm feeling warm. I hope you are too. So releasing the foot here without slingshotting, reaching the hand back up and then bringing the hand and knee back down to the earth. From here, we're just going to tuck the toes and come back into downward facing dog. We'll rinse it out with the chaturanga or meeting in downward facing dog. If at any point you need to skip the vinyasa, that is fine. So from our downward facing dog, we're going to raise our left leg up. Then with an inhale, bringing the left knee to nose and stepping the left foot between hands. Lowering the right knee down, reaching the arms up, looking up towards the ceiling if that is available to you. And then bringing the hands down to frame the foot, stepping the left foot back, down facing dog. Bringing the chest through, plank pose, chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. On an inhale, raising the right leg up. Bringing the right knee all the way to the nose, the knee up and in, and then stepping the right foot between the hands, lowering the left knee down, reaching the arms up. Looking up between the hands. And then bringing the hands down to frame the foot, stepping back to downward facing dog. Then bringing the chest through, plank pose, lowering through chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. Breathing here. Three more breaths and then we'll walk, step, hop, jump or float, whatever's in your practice, between the hands. So looking between the hands, bringing the feet up between the hands, inhaling to look out and lengthen and exhaling to forward fold. From here I'm going to bring my feet out to hip width if they're not already there for you. And I'm going to look out and lengthen once more. And then I'm going to slide my hands underneath my feet. So Pada Hastasana, bringing my Padas, my hands to my feet. So inhaling to look out and lengthen, then exhaling to fold. Seeing if you can press your toes into the crease of your wrist. So allowing yourself to really fearlessly bring that weight forward. Keeping a gentle bend in the knees if you need it. Allowing the neck to be really soft. And using this time to just slow down your breath rate if it got up. Depending on the level of your practice, this may feel like a lot or it may feel easy. Whatever you're feeling, the challenge is still there to stay present. So remember the intention that we set at the beginning of class to stay within your mat. Staying within your breath will, will help you do that. From here, sliding your hands out from underneath your feet, looking out with the flat back, and then simply stepping your left foot back, lowering the left knee down. From here, inhaling to reach the arms up, bringing the eye gaze up towards the ceiling if that's available to you, and then bringing the hands to heart center. So from here, we're going to go into a little twist. So I want you to bring the outside of the left arm to the left, uh, to the right knee. See, I'm using the midsection of my arm here to really press into my leg to lift my torso up and help me in my stretch and twist. So if this is feeling really accessible to you and it feels like an option, you can tuck your left toes under and lengthen out by raising the left knee off the mat. It's just an option. I just give you options so that you can find what you need today. So you may have your knee down, wherever you are, just really pressing into the hands and seeing if you can 
feel a little bit of extra twist in the torso. Whether it's knee down or knee lifted, I want you to open the arms up and fly. Really good. From here, bringing the hands back to prayer, bringing the hands inside of the foot, bringing your right foot out a little bit wider, lowering the left knee down to find low lizard lunge. So this may be enough for you up on your hands, or you may like to lower down onto your elbows. Or you may find somewhere in between. Wherever you are with your option, we all have five breaths here. So just really allow this time to soften and to take note of what's going on. Taking note of how your body feels, how your heart rate feels, how your breath feels, have you stayed with your breath? These are the sort of questions that you can ask yourself continuously through your practice to make sure that you are staying present. Nice. So from here, we're going to add on. We're going to come up onto the hands and then we're just going to press the right knee out and look over the right shoulder. Okay, so this may be enough for you. You should have felt an increase in the stretch of your left hip flexor. All right, if you want to add on here, once again, it's completely optional. You may bend into your left knee and then, keeping the chest really open, reach back and take hold of the left hand. This is one heck of a quad stretch. So if you're not getting there, that is totally fine. Today's practice, I didn't ask for anyone to have props, straps, or uh, blocks because I just want people to find what option they can go to comfortably within their own body. So you may be here, or you may be here. Wherever you are, making sure that you can still breathe there. If you have hold of the foot, release it without slingshotting, and then we're going to bring the right knee back into alignment, so back underneath the body, and then we're going to straighten out that right leg, really looking out and lengthening, so we're squaring the hips here. So the right hip is pressing back, the left hip is coming forward, I'm on my left knee, I'm reaching my head forward, and then with an exhale, I'm just going to really slowly soften down. Breathing here for four more breaths. Nice. From here, we're going to plant the right foot and then we're going to step the left foot up to meet the right. Inhaling to look out with the flat back, exhaling to forward fold. You may like to take hold of opposite elbows, or if you like, you can take your peace sign fingers, taking hold of the big toes, looking out and lengthening, then exhaling to fold down. So good, yogis. Once again, bringing the weight into the balls of the foot, allowing the sit bones to come up. You're not pulling down with the arms, Thus, simply an accessory like an anchor, just keeping you nice and stable. Alright, so we're going to flush that out with a simple sun salutation A, and then we'll go through that sequence on the other side. So releasing the toes if you had them on an inhale, coming all the way up to standing, palms touch, hands come to center. One round of sun A, inhaling, reaching the arms up, exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling to look out and lengthen, hopping, stepping, or jumping back to plank, lowering through chaturanga, inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. So good. Three breaths here, but don't get lazy. 
in your downward facing dog. I still want you to really be working towards lengthening through the hamstrings. Now you can do that by reaching the sit bones up, softening the heels down towards the mat, really pressing the hands into the mat as well. On an inhale, hopping, stepping or jumping the feet between the hands, then inhaling to look out and lengthen. Exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling to reach the arms up, palms touch, and hands come to heart center. We're on the home stretch now, yogis. You're doing so well. Inhaling, reaching up, palms touch, swan diving forward. Inhaling to look out and lengthen, and then this time it's the right foot stepping back, lowering the right knee down. Yes, you're remembering where we're at now. It's fun. Twisting is fun. It's good for our internal organs. You love it. Alright, so I want you to bring the hands to heart center and then bringing the outside of the right arm onto the thigh. So I'm really using it to prop myself up. I'm not letting this knee come in though. I'm resisting the pressure from my arm with the knee pressing out. And I'm pressing into my prayer, which helps me open my chest and twist a little bit more. Okay, so you'll remember our options from the other side. If this is where you need to be today, please stay here. If you would like to tuck the back toes under and press into the ball of the foot to raise the right knee off the mat, that is your option. Really pressing into the hands, breathing here. Even though breathing in a twist, there's that slight restriction, you can still breathe. The body creates space for us. So find that space, find that ability to breathe even when you are under pressure. Now wherever you are, whether it's knee down or knee up, just have the confidence to fly. So reaching the arms open, even if it's just for a moment, then bringing the hands back to centre, and then lowering the knee down if it's lifted, hands at heart centre, reaching the arms up, and then bringing the hands to the inside of the foot. Like I said, this is our home stretch. We're about to get into some nice stretches. So just breathe here, knowing that the hard work is done. No more chattering is today, I promise. Although we haven't been surfing, so that's why I thought I could throw some chaturangas in there without worrying. Usually I get evil looks um, at Rise Up and everyone's been surfing too much. Not that there's any such thing as too much. All right, so from here we may like to lower down onto the elbows. Or you may be up on the hands. So just allowing yourself to soften. The beauty of practicing virtually is that we don't have to spend too much time getting to class. It's so accessible and Thankfully, we can still find a way to connect with our beautiful Rise Up Familiar, our community. And we can also find connection to our body and breath. Connection is so important. Alright, so we're adding on here, pressing the left hand into the left knee. Now this might be exactly where you stay. I'm feeling a really good increase in the stretch of my right hip flexor. I'm keeping my chest nice and open. All right, so from here, I'm going to bend my right knee, bringing my right foot up. This is just optional. If you are reaching back to the foot, I want you to make sure your chest is really open. I'd rather see your chest open and you not get the reach than to compromise that to try and grab hold of the foot. So you may have it or you may not, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're working towards opening up your body and finding space. Breathing through it. If you have hold of the foot, releasing it here and then windmilling the arms down. And then we're going to square ourselves off. So the right knee is down, the left foot is planted, my hips are square, and then I'm going to bring the toes of the left foot up, straightening into the left leg. 
So really just checking that your hips are nice and square here. Feeling that stretch along the left leg, especially up into the hamstring. Taking an inhale to lengthen and then with an exhale you may soften down. The challenge of teaching virtually is that I can't see your faces, um, but I've just got faith that you are all smiling. And if you don't have a smile on your face, if you've been taking yourself too seriously and you're wondering why you're so tight there or maybe beating yourself up about the woulda, shoulda, couldas, I just want you to let all of that go. There is no such thing as being good at yoga we just all need to practice. All right, so from here, stepping the right foot to meet the left, inhaling to look out with the flat back, exhaling to forward fold, taking hold of the elbows and just swaying it out like we did at the beginning of practice, seeing how it may feel a little bit different now to what it did at the beginning. Okay, so our final little fun pose to play with. We're going to bring the feet out a little bit wider so that we can come into a yogi squat, okay? So this is our last kind of working pose. I really want you to be pressing your elbows into your knees, so pressing the knees out. Now this is our option one. Perfect if you're staying here. If you want to add on, you might take the left hand and just like karate chop it Bring it down onto the mat and then reach the right arm up. Okay, so that's our option two. If you're still here at one, bravo to you for listening to your body today. Here's our two. Or if you want, you may even like to bind. If that's just like you're wondering what am I doing right now, that means option three is not for you today and that is fantastic. So wherever you are, we have two more breaths here. If you are on the bind, making sure that your right knee doesn't come in to compensate. If you're on option two or three, looking up towards the ceiling. And then wherever you are, I want us all to meet back at option one in the beautiful yogi squat. From here, we're going to bring our hands down onto the mat, straightening the legs, bringing the toes in, and then just bending at the knees. Let it all out. Vocal exhale if you need. And then bringing the toes wider and sinking back down into our yogi squat, really pressing into the floor with our feet, but we don't wanna just blah and just drop down here. We still want a really nice, long, tall spine. Open chest, elbows pressing the knees out. This is your option one. You may be karate chopping your way into option two, or you may be going wild and just trying to see if you could go for the bind. Noticing when you go for the bind, you really need to create a huge big up, really reaching back and then taking hold of the clasp. There's no point in coming into a bind if it means that we close our chest off. Now, whether you're in option two or three, you're looking up to the ceiling. And if you're in option one, you're looking directly in front of you. Nice, dristy. So by dristy, I mean a gentle eye gaze. Coming back to that Ujjayi breath. And then all coming back to our pose one. Now from here, you can take a simple child's pose or if crow is in your practice, feel free to come into that now. So if you're coming into crow, you'll just plant the hands, bring the knees up to the elbows, really pressing the hands into the mat. If it's not your practice, don't worry about trying it today. We, we don't really have enough time left in class for me to run through it. So if crow's not in your practice, please just come into a child's pose and give yourself a big pat on the back for how well you've done today. If crow is in your practice, have a little play, and then when you're ready, just gently bring yourself down and find your child's pose. <sighs> Letting it all out. 
So if you're like me, you'll prefer your knees wide, arms stretching out, or your child's pose you may just be resembling a little rock right now. Just bringing the forehead down, shoulders draping. So while we're here in this child's pose, I want you to just slow everything down. We've had an active vinyasa, so that means that we've got excited, we've felt sweat, we've felt our heart rates increase, we've felt some thrills and joys of possibly being able to reach a little bit taller, open up, playing with our crow pose can kind of get our energetic levels really high. I just want you to take this time in your child's pose to ground yourself and allow yourself that permission to slow everything down. Now is our time to just unwind and let what we've done during our practice settle in. Okay, so from here, we're going to come up and however you get there, I want you to bring the legs out in front of you. I want you to peel away the flesh of your sit bones so you've got your sit bones really grounded down, sitting up really nice and tall, and then with an inhale, reaching your arms up, Keeping the arms extended, keeping the core really nice and engaged as you reach the arms out. And then just softly finding your version of Paschimottanasana. So this is my version of Paschimottanasana, forward fold, but your version may need a slightly bent knee, okay? Or alternatively, your version may mean just sitting up with the hands on the shins, or above the knees. Wherever you are in your forward fold, I don't want you to judge it, I want you to know that this is your part of the process and then to just soften the mind to that. No one ever got an award for being really flexible, but what people do notice is that peace of mind, that state of being yogic. It's not about how you look in a pose, it's about how you look at life. So I want you to soften your mind and just disregard anything that's not serving you. Seeing if you can just flex your feet a little bit, engaging the thighs and then releasing, just so you can soften down and find comfort within the pose. From here, we're going to come up. We're going to bring our seat all the way to our heels. We're going to hug our knees into our chest and we're going to roll all the way back. From here you can just find a gentle rocking from side to side. So after any forward folding, twisting is really helpful to allow us to release any tension in the lower back. So from here, we're going to hold on to our left knee into the chest and release the right leg long. I want you to bring the left knee all the way over to the right for a gentle reclined spinal twist. Reaching the left hand out, your eye gaze may be up towards the ceiling or it may be looking towards the left hand. In a studio class, this is the time that I really love to be able to go around the class and just remind people by gently pressing on their left shoulder to allow that to soften down as well. So just imagine that my hands are placed on your left shoulder, just gently pressing that down, knowing that softening the shoulder is just as important as getting the knee closer down towards the earth. Taking a big inhale here, feeling that resistance due to the twist. And then with an exhale, releasing it, finding space. On an inhale, we'll gently bring the left knee back in towards center. Hug that knee in and then bring the right knee in to meet it. Bringing your forehead up to the knees, coming into a tiny little ball, 
sinking in, and then releasing the left leg long, hugging the right knee into the chest, keeping the shoulders down and relaxed, and then bringing the right knee over, reaching the right arm out, eye gaze towards the fingertips, really feeling not only the twist in the belly, but the opening in the upper of the chest. Your eye gaze may be towards the ceiling or you may be looking towards your hands. Breathing here. We're about to come into Shavasana, so there's no more work to be done, okay? We've already done enough. You've done so well to stay present on your mat for this duration of what's now 55 minutes, but will be 60. So just give yourself that little kudos, well done, for being here, for bringing light to your day. On an inhale, bringing the forehead up to the knees. And then with an inhale, releasing, stretching the arms up, stretching the toes out, really feeling tension, as you pull in opposite directions, inhale, and then with an exhale, let it all go. I want you to relax the feet. I want you to bring the feet out to slightly wider than hip width apart. I want you to ground your shoulders down, and I want you to bring your palms to face up. Creating any little adjustments you need to just settle the hips down. If it's a little bit chilly where you are, I'm in Australia, so it's not cold here, but if you need a little blanket or a jersey, pop that on now. We've got a couple of minutes in our Shavasana. Now this is the finish line, so don't cheat yourself of the finish of your practice. You've worked so hard for it, and although you might think, oh, I can skip that and just get on with my day, if you just give yourself this extra two minutes to allow your practice to seal in, you'll get so much more of a benefit from the hard work that you've already done. So just be patient with your body. Give it this time. Our bodies are such incredible vehicles for this life that we live. So we need to honor them by taking care and allowing them to stop. So laying here in your Shavasana, I want you to slowly become more aware of your breath. So your breath rate may have slowed down now, that is fantastic. Just noticing the gentle expansion of your belly as you inhale. And how the navel comes down as you exhale, as the belly empties of air. Staying laying in your Shavasana, knowing that even if people are at home and wondering what you're doing, that they can just wait just a moment. Okay, we give so much time to tasks that steal our time, like scrolling through our phones or getting caught up in thoughts that do not serve us, yet we find it so hard to release and allow ourselves to just be for two minutes. So I want you to challenge yourself to just let yourself be. Now I have a beautiful book here, Mindfulness in the Modern World by Osho. So I'm just gonna read a little passage of that as you allow yourself to drift off into your Shavasana. We are not our minds, we are not our thoughts. Create a little distance, watch the mind that's functioning, and then create the distance. Watching automatically creates the distance, so that's all you need to do, to just watch your thoughts. Hence Buddha's insistence again and again, watch, Watch day and watch night.